The number of people now known to have been killed in Monday's earthquakes in Turkey and Syria has now passed 21,000. On February 6, 2023, a series of powerful earthquakes struck Turkey and Syria, inflicting massive damage and substantial loss of life. Official sources indicated that the death toll had topped 50,000, with more than 36,000 people dead in the original magnitude 7.8 earthquake. Seismologists attributed the high death toll to the region's history of large quakes and insufficient construction regulations and emergency response skills. According to several Christian authors and Bible prophecy professors, Jesus promised in the Olivet Discourse that there would be a significant rise in the frequency and severity of earthquakes shortly before His return to the world. So, is this a sign of the end time? How does it relate to the rapture and Christ's second coming? In today's video, we'll discuss the last rapture sign that just appeared and shocked the entire world. In the book of Matthew, Jesus speaks of the signs that would signal His coming, claiming that nations will rise against nations and kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Famines and earthquakes will occur in different locations, according to Matthew 24, 7. These statements may be frightening to us because we see the world around us already surrounded by such catastrophes, and the prospect of them becoming much more frequent and terrible is really frightening. These predictions are intended to make us aware of the gravity of our times. They remind us that we must be spiritually and physically prepared for what will come. In these turbulent times, we must look to God for direction and protection because only He can offer us the courage and fortitude to face the challenges that lie ahead. Natural catastrophes like earthquakes, storms, floods, and wildfires have become more common in recent years. Many people are asking whether the frequency and severity of these incidents are evidence of the biblical end times that have been prophesied for millennia. The Bible predicts that many natural calamities, including earthquakes, will occur during the end times. There will be earthquakes and famines and pestilence in various places, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven, Jesus said in Luke 21:11. The prophet Isaiah also predicted the earth's demise, stating in Isaiah 24:20. The earth shall spin to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. Many of these biblical prophecies are being fulfilled in the world around us today. The incidents of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions have risen dramatically in recent years, with some of the most destructive happening in Japan, Haiti, and Nepal. Hurricanes and floods have also grown more regular and powerful, wreaking havoc and claiming lives. Many people are terrified by these natural calamities, yet they also serve as a warning. They remind us that we live in a fallen world tainted by sin and corruption. The Bible warns us that the earth is expanding under the weight of sin, and the indications we are witnessing are confirmation of this. However, these indicators provide us with a chance to return to God. They remind us that our time on earth is limited and that we must be prepared for what is ahead. We must repent for our sins and seek God's forgiveness and grace since only through Him can we find genuine peace and security in the middle of the storm. For millennia, Christians have been expecting the return of Jesus Christ, an event prophesied in the Bible. While no one knows when Christ will return, countless biblical prophecies detail what will occur when He does. One of the most important signals of Christ's coming is widespread apostasy or abandonment of the faith. As a believer in the gospel, cannot help but note the growing trend of people rejecting their faith and the truth of the Bible. Apostle Paul mentioned this phenomenon in his second epistle in Thessalonians. He forewarned that there would be a significant fall away from the faith before the coming of Jesus Christ in the latter times. Let no one fool you in any manner, he wrote. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, because that day won't arrive until the rebellion unfolds and the man of lawlessness is revealed and the man doomed to destruction. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 This prophecy is especially pertinent today as the world gradually drifts away from God and His teachings. The secularization of society has resulted in a loss of moral compass, and many individuals have adopted a worldview that contradicts the teachings of the Bible. The rising popularity of erroneous beliefs and doctrines is one of the significant contributors to this apostasy. The Bible repeatedly warns us that false prophets will come later leading many astray from their deceitful doctrines. For false prophets and messiahs will arise and do great feats and wonders to mislead, if possible, 
even the chosen, as Jesus told us. As a Christian, you must be watchful and attentive, examining everything against the truth of the Bible. You must likewise be prepared for Christ's return and conduct your lives in a manner that pleases God, constantly keeping in mind that we don't know when He will return. In addition to the apostasy, there will be numerous natural catastrophes and signals in the sky, according to Jesus in Luke 21, verses 25 through 26. There will be signs in the moon, sun, and stars, and on the earth's suffering of nations with confusion, the sea and the seas howling. Men's heart fail them in terror and expectancy of what is to come on the earth because the powers of the sky will be disturbed. The restoration of the country of Israel is another key evidence of Christ's coming. The restoration of the country of Israel is a miraculous occurrence predicted in the Bible and realized in our lifetime when the Jewish people returned to their ancestral homeland in 1948 to form the modern state of Israel. This event was crucial in global history and fulfilled a biblical prophecy. The Old Testament prophet predicted a day when God would return the Jewish people to their homeland and restore them as a nation. According to Isaiah 11:12. On that day, the Lord will reach His hand a second time to retrieve the remnant that remains of His people. He will signal the nations to collect the exiled Israelites and the scattered Judahites from the earth's four corners. We're making a point that 26 centuries ago, God announced through His prophets that the Jewish people would be returned first to their country and then to their God through His new covenant in Christ Jesus. Six centuries later, through the Apostle Paul, God prophesies that the Jewish people would be restored to God and their Messiah when the fullness of the Gentiles had entered God's kingdom. How will we know when that moment comes? When Jesus indicated that the times of the Gentiles would be completed when Jerusalem was no longer under the rule of the Gentile countries, He provided us with a solution, Luke 21, 28. The unusual prophetic event occurred on June 7, 1967 during the Arab-Israeli Six-Day War, when Israel recovered sovereign control of the ancient city of Jerusalem for the first time in 19 centuries. We think this historic watershed event marked the beginning of the end of the time of the Gentiles, as Jesus predicted. After this era, we are in a transition period. Before Christ's coming, the time has come to restore all things, Acts 3, 20-21. Although many more Gentiles will continue to enter God's kingdom, especially during the final enormous international outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're also on the approach of the day when a massive number of Jews will enter God's kingdom through Yeshua HaMashiach. Thus, teaching the gospel of Christ to the Jewish people is crucial to God's fulfillment of His prophetic promises and the realization of His ultimate purpose. If the fulfillment of Ezekiel's vision of Israel being returned to her own country was amazing, how much more wonderful will it be when God returns Israel to Himself? The restoration of Israel to God will help bring in the Messianic Age, also known as the Millennium, in which Jesus the Messiah King will come and reign over the world's nations from Jerusalem for a thousand years. The Bible mentions certain events that will take place before Christ comes to usher in the Messianic Age. We intend to avoid discussing these occurrences or developing an end-of-the-world chronology. We recognize that many devout Christians have opposing views on the significance and timing of these prophetic occurrences. We are also aware of our Lord's instructions, but no one knows of that day and hour, not even the angels of heavens, and nor the Son, but the Father alone, Matthew 24, 36. However, Jesus remarked in the same chapter, Now learn the parable of the fig tree. Whenever its branches have already become delicate and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you, when you see all these things, realize that He is near, right at the door. Matthew 24, 32, 33. Now, as to the times and epochs, brethren, you do not need anything written to you as the Apostle Paul stated, for you know well that the Lord's day will come like a thief at night. While they are shouting, peace and safety, devastation will fall upon them unexpectedly, like labor pangs on a pregnant woman. They cannot escape. But you, friends, are not in darkness, that the day might overtake you as a thief, for you are all sons of light and also sons of day. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-5 With this in mind, we've created a basic timeline of end-of-the-world events based on our understanding of biblical prophecy. It should be noted that these events may not necessarily occur in the sequence listed, and some of them may overlap. 
We believe that the founding of Israel on May 14, 1948, signified the commencement of these end-time climax events by ushering in the New Age. At this very moment, humanity is experiencing the last hours of the end days, times of vast spiritual darkness and deceit over the planet, Isaiah 60, 1 through 2. This world lacks not just God, but also law and love, according to Genesis 6, 11 through 12. The world's nations are mired in wickedness and are on the verge of being judged. People are more interested in loving themselves, their wealth, and their pleasures than they are in loving God. Many people engage in deceptive practices that are passed off as Christianity, yet their lives deny Christ and His power because they have not subjected themselves to Christ's authority. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. According to Matthew 24, 28, Israel's numerous adversaries surround the country like ravenous vultures swarming around a dead body. Prophecies about the end of time found in the Bible are about to be realized, and the time is now. We should be praying for the Lord's return for various reasons, demonstrates our confidence and trust in God's promises. We believe He will honor His pledge and that Christ will one day return. Our prayers express our eagerness for this occurrence and our confidence in His promises. Moreover, the second coming of Christ will see the completion of God's purpose for the world. It will be a time of tremendous pleasure and celebration for Christians as we are reunited with Christ and dwell in His kingdom. It will also be a day of reckoning for those who have rejected Him, but we pray that many people will come to Him in repentance before it's too late. Finally, our prayers for the Lord's return serve as a reminder that our time on earth is limited and we should spend our lives in a manner that pleases God. It is a summons to be cautious and observant, live in a way that respects Him, and be prepared for His return. Finally, the Maranatha message and biblical text regarding Jesus' second coming to remind us of the hope we have as believers. We should be praying for the Lord's return and looking forward to fulfilling His promises. Our prayers express our beliefs in God's purpose for the world and our hope for His return. May we be found loyal and ready when Christ returns. However, are you preparing for the end times? Let us know in the comment.